Welcome to Finances Do Matter. My name is Richard and this is our regular weekly update. We've seen gold prices surge, nearly hitting $2,100. We saw silver prices surge, rising above $26. And we saw equity markets surge, dip and come back again on Friday. What's going on? Well, we'll take a look. Okay, so before we actually look at what happened last week and what we can perhaps expect this coming week, I would first ask you please to give this video a thumbs up and to subscribe and press the bell sign to the channel. We literally only have 1% of viewers who are subscribers. We need more than that. So please make sure you do subscribe. Last Wednesday was important because the Federal Reserve raised interest rates in the United States by a quarter of 1%, raising its benchmark Fed funds rate from 5% to 5.25%. Now that had ramifications in that it buoyed the dollar a little bit, but it also caused gold and silver prices to rise, which seemed somewhat strange, bearing in mind, of course, when interest rates go up, the cost, the, if you like, opportunity cost of holding non-interest bearing assets rise and normally their prices fall. But he didn't because Fed Chair Jerome Powell in his statement actually gave an indication that this rise, which was the 10th consecutive rise in a row, could be put on pause because the Fed wants to see if it's having the effect that it wanted it to have on inflation before making a decision whether to rise again, suggesting that at its current rate, the inflation figures of 5% may now be coming down further. And so as a result, markets thought, hmm, well, if that's going to be the end of our interest rate rises, good news. And then the next movement ultimately will be a decline. However, that was put paid to slightly on Friday because then we had the employment figures coming out of the United States, which were considerably higher than market expectations. Some 280,000 new jobs, whereas the market was expecting less than half of that. And so as a result, some profit taking and we saw gold and silver prices come back down. We'll take a quick look at the prices now, and then I'll talk a little bit further as to what we can expect to see in the coming weeks and how also the equity markets have been affected. Okay, if we take a look at the gold price, we can see that that was up $27 last week and closed the week at $2,017. It did, in fact, on Wednesday, Wednesday night UK time, actually spike as high as $2,091. And it really did look as if $2,100 would be reached. As you can see on the chart, though, it fell back, but recovered a little. But on Friday, we saw really profit taking occur with the, with the gold market coming down. But towards the end of the day, recovering a little. Silver did more or less the same, although perhaps the spike wasn't quite as great. And silver ended the week up 61 cents at $25.68. The equity markets over the course of the week were marginally down, except for the NASDAQ, which was very slightly up. But on Friday, which is what this chart shows here, we saw a significant rise in equities with the Dow up for the day, not for the week, but for the day, 1.65%, the S&P up 1.85, and the NASDAQ up 2.25. And similarly, we had rises in Europe and the UK stock markets. Looking at the crypto markets for today, we can see that the market is down 1% over the last 24 hours with Bitcoin at $28,923 and Ethereum at $1,910. So the Federal Reserve raised rates last Wednesday about a quarter of percent. Then on the Thursday, the European Central Bank also raised its base rate by 
the same amount, 25 basis points. And next Thursday, we have the Bank of England likely to raise its rates by exactly the same amount. Now, we have an interesting scenario build up here. You have inflation in the United States at around 5%. In Europe, it's around 7 And in the UK, it's around 10 Now, with that in mind, the Fed was hoping not to increase rates any further. But because of the higher level of inflation, and bear in mind, all of these countries are looking to get the inflation rate back down to 2%, we are expecting two rate rises from the European Central Bank and potentially two rate rises from the Bank of England. Now, of course, the dilemma that we all have is a potential world recession. Because by raising rates, you make it less easy for organizations, companies, businesses, individuals to borrow. Therefore, there's lower expenditure. Lower expenditure normally, in theory, causes prices to come down, but also thwarts business investment and often leads to greater job losses. And as a result of that, of course, a recession normally tends to occur. However, the jobs report from the US on Friday was considerably higher than anticipated and the Fed is now being faced with the dilemma of a strong jobs market, a relatively, I say relatively, strong economy and interest rates continuing to rise to a level beyond another half a percent perhaps, it will find it difficult to go any further. So with that in mind, they're almost trapped. And we just have to hope and pray, and we've seen it with the oil price coming down about $4 a bar barrel, 4 to $5 a barrel in the last week, that this downward pressure on oil and energy will bring the inflation rate down as well. And then in the background, the central banks are restricting bank lending, making it more difficult for you and I and businesses to borrow money, thereby again restricting the growth in the economy. But they don't want to go too far because if they do, a recession is caused and then everyone suffers. So it's a very difficult balance to set. Now, next week we have further uh, inflation data coming out of the United States. I think it's his memory serves me correctly on Wednesday. And then we have very little data coming out until the 2nd of June, where there's another jobs report. The Federal Reserve will be reporting then on the 14th of June, whether to raise rates or not, but the day before, there'll be additional inflation data then. So, whatever happens this coming week, will probably set the scene to the end of May. And then the data on the 2nd and the data on the 13th will make the bank decide what to do on the 14th. And that will probably then set the trend for the next three months because we'll be entering the summer period where markets tend, quite frankly, to do very little. So it, traders will either decide to buy precious metals or to sell, buy equities or to sell, buy cryptos or to sell. And then we should have a couple of months of relative, shall we say, indecisive, shallow movement. It's not set in stone. Anything can happen. So that's where we are currently at. The crypto markets are doing moderately well, but it's just moving more or less in line with the NASDAQ index. And frankly, when we look at property, we have seen in, in the last week, the United Kingdom reporting increased property sales and potentially, not quite there yet, a potentially a limit on property prices going down. Of course, in the United States, it's slightly different. You have larger areas and you also have huge differences between one state and another. And we'll have to just wait and see 
what is going to happen to the property market there. If we enter into a recession, if that does occur, and some argue we are already in one, but if it becomes quite serious, then that will cause property prices to fall much further. In the United Kingdom, we think that because there are so few houses being built compared to the demand for housing, to see a major drop in property prices, something quite significant and serious would have to happen. Now, once again, I'd appreciate it if you'd give this video a thumbs up, you subscribe and press the bell sign. We had a great coronation on Saturday and I'm sure for those who are interested in monarchy, you will have seen numerous news reports and certainly on YouTube various videos showing that coronation. We do pageantry extraordinarily well here in the United Kingdom and whether you're a monarchy supporter or not, you cannot but be impressed by the performance of troops and uniform personnel. I also went on my little trip to Carlisle on the Pullman Express train, which is an old posh train. It was a wonderful trip. Thank you for those who wished me well on that. It was a very long day. We set off from Cardiff, in fact, in South Wales at 6 a.m. and we got back just after midnight so it was a long day on a train but we were fed and watered extraordinarily well and now i need to go on a diet for the next seven days at least just to compensate for what i ate yesterday thank you for listening we'll see you soon <laughs>